Hey Tiddly Peeps, it's Eric again. Uh, we're gonna do some more news stories. Uh, in the last video, I did a news story on the uh, Kosovo Serbian uh, train uh, fiasco that happened. Uh, I also mentioned in that video the uh, referendum in Bosnia against the Republika the Srpska and Bosnia and the, that whole split that might happen. Uh, happen. Um, just, you know, just kind of explain what's going to happen there. This happened in September of 2016. Um, I know it's a lot of, you know, Serbian stuff, because I'm a weird person. I like Serbian stuff. If you if you guys know me by now, I'm a weird guy. And, but, you know, I'll get to, like, American weird stories, news stories, to so I don't bore you. But... These, you know, it kind of this one interests me. I actually did a paper on this in my, one of my writing classes. Um, so let's get into it here. This is from uh, BBC News. Title is uh, Bosnian Serb referendum challenges peace terms. And I'll put the uh, as always with these news articles. I'll put the link in the description below. For this article if you want to read along or you want to read it yourself or anything like that so let's get into it do outsider sunday's bosnian serb referendum in republic of srpska might seem like much ado about nothing it is on the face of it just a plebiscite about the date of a public holiday but even before it's held the vote was increased has increased tensions in bosnia herzegovina prompted threat and counter threat about military action and given Russia an opportunity to interfere. Above all, the peace accord was, has kept a lid on conflict for more than two decades, is facing its sternest test in many years. Their rhetoric is frightening to many citizens. The former leader of the Bosnian army, Sefer Halil Halilovic, implied that the Republic of Srpska might come under military attack if it held the referendum. In response, Serbia's foreign minister Ivica Dasic. I hate it like in these articles like they don't put like sometimes like they don't put the little symbols like if it's a in eh or a this. Because I can't like there's a whole bunch of ways to say like there's three types of C's in the Serbian language that I can never tell in these articles. It's kinda of annoying. But anyways, promise to elect ethnic Serbs. Considering Bosnia's recently recent history, it was a troubling exchange. Referendums in the former Yugoslavia have on many uh, occasions led to some very negative consequences. So we have to take this event seriously, says Christopher Bennett, a longtime Sarajevo resident and author of Bosnia's Paralyzed Peace. The dynamic agreement ended Bosnia's ruinous civil war in 1995, but the solution created problems of its own. In the sp in split, it split the country into two so-called ethnic entities. The population of the Republic of Srpska is mainly ethnic Serb. The federation is shared largely by Bosniaks, who are mostly Muslim, and ethnic Croats. Those are the ethnic Croats that usually live in the south near the Aegean Sea, I think it's over there, like near the Mediterranean. This setup succeeded to an extent in a diffusion tension, but it also created fertile ground for unscrupulous politicians to play up ethnic differences for the sake of personal gain. You know what, also, uh, before we b go any further, you guys probably don't know where Republika Srpska even is. You know what, I, it's in Bosnia, but if Bosnia kind of looks like a like a triangle, right? Okay. So the northern, like along the northern border, and then along the the southern, or the, not the southern, along the northern and eastern border, like this, and then the northern border. That's like that's kind of where Republika Srpska is. And then the rest is just kind of like where the Bosniaks live. Uh, its capital is Banja Luka, and there's also like a little part on the um, northern border called the Birchko District. It's kind of like a uh, like a compromise sort of thing. 
between those two, the, between Bosnia and Republika Srpska. In recent years, Republika Srpska, President Milorad Dodik, has reaped the benefits more than most. He consistently challenges national institutions, promoted a siege mentality, among his electorate and repeated rate and pre repeatedly raised the possibility of secession. His instance on celebrating Republika Srpska Day on the 9th of January and putting um, the matter to a public vote is deliberately provocative. It is not only an Orthodox Christian feast day, but also the day Republika Srpska was founded in 1992, an event which almost which was among the triggers for more than three years of ethnic violence and forced evictions. The National Court has already ruled the Republika Srpska Day unconstitutional and banned the referendum, but this has just played into Mr. Dodik's hands. Ethnic Serbs in Republika Srpska that feel the world is against them, they are more likely to vote his way, not just in the referendum, but in the local elections next weekend. Nationalist Defiance Christopher Bennett says Mr. Dodik is enjoying the opportunity to fill out the authority of Bosnia's fragile federal institutions, but it is a potentially dangerous move. His, he is actually taking steps against the Constitutional Court, which is a fundamental elegant element of the peace agreement which ended the Bosnian War 21 years ago. Sefer Halilovic said that if Milor Dodik goes ahead with this policy, that then he is effectively tearing up the Dayton Peace Agreement. That could be dangerous. Do you, if you guys don't know what the Peyton, Dayton Peace Agreement was, that happened where Serbia, Croatia, and Bosnia all stopped uh, fighting against each other in Bosnia for the Bosnian Civil War. So uh, you know the Croatians got the kind of kind of got a little district in the south. I forget what they call theirs. Uh, their little section, it's kind of in the south little tip there, uh, next to like the Dalmatian Islands kind of thing. And then, you know, the Serbs got, of course, Republika Srpska, and then the rest, like, you know, with Sarajevo being the capital of just Bosnia, or mostly the Bosniaks. Uh, so, let's see, let's get back in this. In February, Serbia and the EU pressured Dodik into abandoning a referendum of recognition of the national court, but this time he is defying Serbia and enjoying the support of Russia, which has leapt at the chance to discomfit the Western powers which usually sees Bosnia as their domain. About 600 international troops are being are deployed in Bosnia-Herzegovina under EU command and reserves can be sent in a short notice. Also, a uh, thing that um, that you guys might not know. Uh, in 2013, I think it was, ha the Bosnian Spring happened, where I think they got rid of a whole bunch of like corrupt politicians and stuff, and you know, kind of. And so, Bosnia is still not kind of catching up back from that, from having that whole thing happen. So they're not as stable as they are, you know, they're not as stable. So stuff like this can happen, and it, it'll just screw up some stuff in their country here. <clears throat> Russian support. Russia has defended the right of the Republika Srpska to hold a referendum, and President Vladimir Putin even hosted Mr. Dodik in Moscow just three days before the vote. The, Re the Republika Srpska president said he took the opportunity to air his grievances. I pointed to the fact that in Bosnia-Herzegovina 20 years later with the high representative in the constitutional court there are still foreigners who prominently make decisions. And indeed, the high representative is the figure with the power to bring Mr. Dodik's games to an end. Under Dayton, the Office of High Representatives, OHR, may dismiss any politicians who jeopardize the peace. Those powers were used scores of times in the first decade after the conflict. The OHR removed the president of Republika of Srpska in 1999 and on the two occasions uh, sacked the ethnic Croat member of the Bosnian pres presidency in 2001 and 2005. The, her the current HR Austrian diplomat Valentin Insko 
has been reluctant to impose punishments. This hands-off approach was supposed to provide space for Bosnia's institutions to mature and strengthen, but Mr. Insko said recent events may force a rethink. We are watching the situation closely and the international community has means to ensure, ensure that the peace is respected. A significant line has been crossed. The Republika Srpska is acting against the direct order of the Constitutional Court, a clear breach of the rule of, of the law. Sorry. We need to be clear that this is not a, section, a secession referendum, but I hope it is a wake-up call to the international community. In order to ensure we do not get to that point, we need to take a stronger line against those who advocate for division. Citizens are smarter. Some influ influential Bosnian voices have been oh, has also been working to restore calm af after a wake of unsettling rhetoric. A Bosniak Veterans Association called the remarks of their former general Sifer Halilovic, Halilovic outrageous and the ethnic Serb member of the Bosnian presidency Mladen Ivanic said there will be no war because citizens are much smarter than the leaders they elect. Still, it would be surprised if Sunday's vote went against Milorad Dodik and victory may embolden them to press, to press ahead with this long stated aim of holding a secession referendum by 2018. The water should be smoother after the local elections on the 2nd of October, but plain sailing remains a distant dream. So, the, re the secession of Bos uh, of Republika Srpska. This I also saw that in another article that uh, the Prime Minister of Serbia ha was um, telling them not to do this because they don't want to, you know, get any attention to Serbia like that. But I've also seen stuff that Vucic has also been saying. Oh yeah, we'll support. Uh, Republic of Serbia. So I'm not really sure what their stance is on that. Is in this article they're like, oh yeah, we're not with them. You know, they're doing their own thing. But you know, if they're gonna be independent, they're probably gonna unify with Serbia at some point. So these with Republic of Serbia and then Kosovo in the south, there's just a lot of Serbian tension all over this former Yugoslavia. Area. I don't know what I would do here. Putin's been kind of sneaky lately. I don't know what he's been doing. He's, he's getting his hands in the Balkans. I don't know what he's trying to do there. Maybe he's trying to make like a war, another Warsaw Pact, but it was like a pan-Slavic Union, you know, to counteract the uh, European Union. I'm not sure what he would be doing with that. Um, I wonder what the U.S. is... Uh, stance on, on this is. I wonder if Obama said anything about it. So I don't know if he saw any, said anything about it. Uh, is this, like, because this would, I guess, you know, since Serbia, uh, Republika Srpska is part of the Dayton Agreement, that would, yeah, that would tear up the Dayton Agreement. So technically, that would, maybe, that would just re reinstate the Bosnian Civil War again. Plus, you know, Croatia would come in, too, and get their guys in the south, too. So it would just be a big freaking cluster of ridiculousness going on. And then, you know, plus, it wouldn't be just the, you know, there was three, the main three uh, Yugoslav power things there. It would also be probably, maybe, if Serbia still has a dispute with Kosovo and everything, then Albania would get in on this big, huge thing. And whoever, and all these allies, I don't know what's going to happen, guys. Two things against Serbia that could potentially start another world war. This has got to be interesting. I wonder what's going to happen. What do you guys think would happen? Leave it in the comments below. Uh, for now, make sure to be sharing commenting, subscribing, all the ings, nuke that like button, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.